Tiger Hunter comes in with an excellent question asking, should I upgrade again sooner or should I keep what I've got? Now this is a two-parter and there's a bunch of detail to it. So bear with us. He says the specs of his new PC is a 13900K CPU, the Strix Z790-AD DDR4 motherboard, 32 gigs of RAM, 3600. He's got a 48 inch LG Ultra Gear OLED, 120 Hertz. Should I upgrade sooner because I went DDR4? Use case is 70% 4K 120 Hertz Warzone and Spider-Man and 30% Blender. Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft and keep it forever. Don't pay full price, get the best deal from our sponsor URCD Keys using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. Now that's the first question he asked, but then he did a follow-up because we needed a bit more detail. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just scrolling down to it and through the magic of not editing, <laughs> we're going to do this. He went from an 8700K, a 1660 Ti and 60 Hertz 4K TV. He regrets not listening to our advice in the past. Buy the best you can because you'll pay twice. Happy with the 4090 and 3900K, pay twice because the 8400 didn't age well. <laughs> so he had an i5-8400. I have one of those. You do. It's a Mahomes Theater PC it is. that literally plays videos. Does a great job. Uh, although it's running out of support at this point, so I do plan to replace it just because the motherboard's not getting BIOS updates and th that's sort of passing into history. But great CPU. Nothing wrong with it. So this is an interesting one. I would normally say, my default answer to this would be absolutely not. Your machine's absolutely fine. DDR4, DDR5 doesn't make a huge difference. Um, our 17 year old son has an i9-13900K. He has 64 gigs of DDR4-3600. Mm -hmm. He has an RTX 3090. He plays at 1440p yep. and he has DDR4. Mm -hmm. It's two or three percent difference from the DDR5. Uh, we've tested it. It's, we've seen other tests. We've done our, we've got both setups ourselves. It's trivial. I mean, if you know, benchmarks can tell the difference. You never will. I, you would never ever notice the difference. However, the 4090 is the one card that is fast enough to show a difference. That will like the DDR5. There is, and I am not talking about 1080p, but I am talking about 1440p. At 1440p, now he's at 4K. That, yes. that softens it a bit. At 1440p, there is a 10 to 15% difference between DDR4 and DDR5 with a 13900K and a 4090, but only a two or 3% difference with a 3090. So the 4090 is so fast, it finally shows the DDR5 working. Now, that's a 1440p, it closes a bit at 4K. Still, he has a super premium machine. Should he have gone DDR5? It depends upon when he did it, because if he did it last year when DDR5 prices were literally double what they currently are, I understand why he didn't. Now today, when we're recording this, DDR5 is not nearly as expensive. And of course, yes, you should absolutely have gone for DDR5 today. But if you did it a year ago, you would have spent a fortune trying to do it. And I understand why you didn't. At this point, don't bother. You would spend another fortune replacing your motherboard and replacing your RAM for what? Five to 10% more performance at 4K? water under the bridge, the ship sailed. Yeah, you're losing a little bit of performance based upon that. Blender's probably a little bit slower on your DDR4. Mm, no, he's not, a, not enough to warrant. No, problem. absolutely not. The only thing he probably needs is a bit more RAM. 32 gigs of RAM? Yes, and he's not gonna wanna do that because he's got really good timings, but he actually might be surprised about that because if he hasn't tested it, he might be disappointed in the results. This is another reason I wanted to address this. I'm going to oh, highlight this CL14. here. Yeah, I'll bet you it's not as good as he thinks it is. He's got 32 gigs of DDR4 3600 CL 141434. That is Samsung B die. It was epic when it came out. It isn't as good as it used to be. I have two separate kits of that stuff. When we first got it and tested it, 
the difference in the benchmarks was there in benchmarks. It doesn't make a huge difference in the real world. Sure as heck doesn't make a difference in 4K. But I have since discovered in more recent testing that the modern chips don't use it the way the chips used it when it came out. On an i7-8700K overclocked, it was faster and it made a difference. Mm. On an, I didn't test it on the 13900K, but I did test it on the 13600K. Would you like to have your mind blown? Okay, go. DDR4 3600 CL18 mm -hmm. was faster than CL14. It's not supposed to be. No. It was. Uh -uh. We tested it extensively. Multiple games. Multiple scenarios. Live gameplay and benchmarks. Take it out. Put it on a 9900K. It's faster again. There's something about the memory controller and the new chips. Huh. There's some weight state being introduced. The Raptor Lake chips were designed for DDR5. The, back, the DDR4 backwards compatibility was you know, kind of stuck on there to make it work. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you why, but I can tell you this. The Samsung B die lost its edge on the new chips. Hmm. Isn't that weird? Yep, just a little bit. It's such a narrow case. It's the kind of thing that you discover when you're testing. If I had a full crew of editors and script writers and people to help me make videos, it's the kind of thing we'd make a video about. Mm. It's the kind of thing that I think more tech channels should cover. But I, I, I used to make videos about that kind of stuff. But first of all, too many of them don't get enough views. We didn't get enough views on those kind of things. Yep. And Samsung B die is such a corner case. And Samsung B die on Raptor Lake versus slower DDR4 is such an unbelievable corner case. And you can't get the stuff anymore. I mean, it, it's not commonly sold anymore. Well, he said that he went DDR4 because it was mature and the motherboard that he got was the best DDR4 motherboard at the time. I understand, but it's... Average DDR5 with a 49 is still going to win. Well, he said he upgraded a month ago and had the, DDR, the RAM laying around, so that's why he went with that. Right. He had the RAM laying around from his 8700K, where it did make a difference. But Stick 64 gigs of DDR4 3600 CL18 on there. Be surprised. Run them. Benchmark them. Do something at 4K. Run Spider-Man. Run, um, well, actually Call of Duty does have a built-in benchmark. Uh, Cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's weird. But then do it again on your 8700K, and then the b die wins. <laughs> He'll go back to his 8700K. Isn't yeah. that weird? <laughs> So, the specific kits I had were the G-Skill Flarex stuff from years ago. Mm. G-Skill sent me one, and then I bought one. And then I used them together for a while. So, all right. So, the long and short of it with this question is keep it. Yeah, you're buried in it. You own it. Don't, yeah. don't waste your time. Changing that out is the biggest waste of time. Um, enjoy it, and when you're ready for an upgrade, I mean, you're going to need a whole new platform anyway. So you just keep so it, I enjoy it. he's heading to 16? Skip 14 and 15? Uh, no, skip 16. 17 is the soonest you should consider. 17. Okay. LGA 1850, uh, 1851 is coming out next year. That'll be 15th gen. Yeah. That'll be Arrow Lake and Lunar Lake. So Lunar Lake. Is skip 17. 16. Arrow Lake is 15th. Lunar Lake is 16th. Beast Lake is 17th. Oh, so Beast Lake will... Okay. 80 this, cores, here we come. <laughs> we'll see if that rumor ends up being true. Even 40 cores is going to be impressive. We'll see what it looks like, but basically 2026, three years. Okay. Is this upgrade window. Enjoy it, keep it, don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, you run Blender and 4K, 120 hertz. 64 gigs of DDR4 is not crazy. It's 100 bucks. And here's the kicker. Because most people don't understand about RAM, you could probably sell that 32 gigs of CL14 RAM for a pretty freaking penny. Yeah, especially because of the Samsung B die amp. Yeah. Because someone will want that. Somebody will. And they'll go, but the benchmarks, man. I saw a benchmark. I saw the benchmarks too. It is faster in benchmarks. You're not a benchmark. <laughs> it's... It's a pretty trivial difference. The one place where the B-Die was really helpful 
was Zen 1 and Zen Plus. A Ryzen 7 1700X and a Ryzen 7 2700X, that stuff was ultra compatible and worked really well. Although, interestingly enough, when they finally went back and backdated the BIOSes to the 304 series boards and they made them work without an issue on the Zen 3 chips, they ruined it. Um, I have a uh, X370 ASUS Crosshair Hero 6 motherboard. I've owned it since new. It was the original build video on the channel and I put a Ryzen 7 1700, I did a full machine build. I used that as a daily driver for six months back in 2017 when it launched, then I replaced it with Skylake X. That's gotten several upgrades over the years. I still have that original case, cooler, power supply. That exact machine is still sitting in the office. It currently has a Ryzen 7 2700X on it, and it currently has the latest BIOS update to support all the latest Zen 3 chips. Mm -hmm. It will no longer post with b oh. at all. It will not even boot. Oh. It'll boot with everything else. If you flash back to an older BIOS version, it will. It will. One of the BIOS updates to add Zen 3 compatibility broke compatibility with the CL14 stuff. Whoopsie. It's a weird place to be. Now that RAM works in other Ryzen systems I have, but not that one. And it used to, because I had that RAM in there I in know, 2017. I know. I remember that confusing the snot out of you. So, it's a weird, weird business that we're in. I have, with all the hardware that we have used in the past seven years on YouTube, I have very much come to the conclusion, don't get cute. Nope. Don't buy weird stuff. Nope. Don't go too far out of the lines. Buy normal things that everything's designed for and yeah. don't try to be overly clever because you end up in weird situations that no one can help you with because so few people are running those configurations. Correct. You know, if you want to build an AM5 or a 13900K and do DDR5, DDR5, 6000, either by the XMP RAM or by the Expo RAM, don't get clever. Yep. But what about 6400? What about 6800? I heard that 7000 is coming up. <laughs> Great. And the next generation of motherboards that are designed for it, do it. Yep. But for today, 6000. Yep. And I do have faster RAM than 6,000. 6, I've got Trident Z5 RGB DDR4, uh, DDR5, sorry, DDR5 6400. Okay. Uh, CL32. It will not boot. It will not post in either my i9 13900K test bench or my Ryzen 9 7950X test bench at 6400. Not even with the latest BIOSes. It won't. Hmm. In fact, I've not had any machine that that will properly post in. Now I have launched motherboards. Maybe the newest motherboards have a revision that works better. I've got the boards from when they launched. Right. But it, I do use that RAM, but I had to manually set it to 6000. Mm -hmm. Works perfectly. Either system works, works fine. Looking for a Windows 10 or 11 product key, but you don't want to spend $100 to $200 for it? Our sponsor, URCD Keys, provides discounted Windows keys at amazing prices. $15 for Windows 10 Professional, $21 for Windows 11 Professional, and just $60 for Microsoft Office 2021 Professional Plus. These product keys are the real deal. They activate directly with Microsoft Online, link to your Microsoft account, and they work forever. For Windows, you simply go to Settings, Update and Security, Activation, click Change Product Key, paste the key provided by URCD Keys, and in seconds, you're activated with Microsoft. For Office, go to setup.office.com, sign in with your Microsoft account, paste the product key provided by URCD Keys, and then download Office 2021 Pro Plus directly from Microsoft. Remember to use the discount code TD20 to save 25% off the already deeply discounted prices and support our channel at the same time. We have been using product keys from URCD Keys for almost five years now without any issues and encourage you to do so as well. He wants to know what recommendations for DDR4 64 gigs. 64 gigs of DDR4 3600 or 4000. 4000 actually works fine in those. Um, CL18. Team group, I mean. Oh, it doesn't matter. They're all the same RAM these days. YOLO. Team group, G skill, uh, tri uh, either Trident ZRGB, uh, you can do uh, Rip Jaws if you prefer the non RGB look. Um, 
I, I love the team group stuff. We have tons of team group we kits. We do have a lot of team group. Uh, they work in everything. They're, they're sort of, they're not the flashiest, fanciest RGB RAM. It just works though. Oh my goodness, I've got tons of them. Basically either team group or Trident Z is what I buy these days. There you go. Thank you very much for the multi-part question and hope that was helpful. You've got a great CPU, a great motherboard. Okay, so it's DDR4. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. You've got a great monitor. Holy smokes, that's a really nice monitor. Enjoy Warzone and Spider-Man and don't worry about it.